Hello, screenwriters, and welcome to Writing for Screens, the screenwriting step-by-step -step project, volume 225, episode 225. My name is Glenn Gers, and I come to you every Monday through Friday, if I can make it, at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time Zone to let you look over my shoulder, share my screen as I write a script. I am doing this in order to teach a part of screenwriting that I think is a little undertaught, which is the, the mechanical day-by-day, line-by-line process of script writing. Uh, not talking about what makes a great script, not talking about what sells, just saying if you want to make a great script, you have to write a script, and the process of writing it is hard. And, and you need help learning it. So I'm going to just show you what I learned in my 25-year career writing for TV and movies. I had to figure this out for myself, and I thought on my way out of the business, I would let people see the tricks and tips and skills that I figured out that I think are helpful in case they are helpful to you when you are facing the blank page. If they are not helpful, don't do them. It's not like it's the right way. It's not like there is a right way. It's just the way I figured out that I think is very practical, and I'm trying to show it. Uh, terms of practical, let's talk about what I really think is helpful, which is the first three playlists on this channel. Screenwriting essentials, screenwriting tools, skills, skills and craft, and the process, being a writer. This is where I have tried to condense down what I know into useful, practical, short lessons. And each one of these videos is about 10 minutes long, and the topic of the video is right there in the thumbnail. Dramatic action, flashbacks, genre, whatever it is that I think I have something to tell you about, I've put it into these lessons, and I strongly urge you to watch those at your leisure if you have questions, because that's where I have put down everything I can think of that I think is useful. So that's what this channel is really about. And uh, in my spare time, I'm doing this project where I'm letting you watch me write in case you will learn something that you can use. That's all it is. Um, hello, Nathan. Glad to see you today, too. Happy Thursday. Um, let us get right to the writing part. Uh, I am polishing the draft of the script. I've got a full draft of the script. I spent weeks and weeks and weeks figuring out an outline. All I had to begin with was just a basic uh, one sentence idea. And I built that into an outline. Then I took that outline and I wrote the roughest possible version of it to just try and get it out of outline form into scenes, because that is the most important thing. Think in scenes. I would say if you need to know anything from me, it's this. Think in scenes. Everything has to be turned into a scene. I did a whole video about it. And so having got it into a rough scene shape, I then had to sit there, go through it scene by scene, uh, and try and figure out what would make each scene work better. And now I'm just polishing it, just making the words flow, making sure that things aren't confusing or boring or uh, many other things that one should try and avoid. Hi, Gene. Okay, so, um, and we did well. Uh, the last couple of scenes were just already in really good shape. This one is pretty good, too. This scene is simply McLean. Um, Penn Station, NYC. Uh, okay. Um, so, um, what this scene is, just very briefly, um, it's the first of a series of short scenes showing where all the various uh, members of this group are as they converge on George's house. Um, so this scene, and in each scene we get a little bit of an insight into that character. Um, so in this scene, McLean, uh, the Wall Street guy, is, um, is heading by train to uh, Pittsburgh where he's going to get a rent a car. And, um, and he, he has a, an opportunity to flirt with a guy, but he messes it up because he is a compulsive detective. And that is the point of this scene. The point of this scene is that he is a compulsive detective. 
So um, I'm just fixing a little bit of that. Um, so I'm just fixing it. The, there was just trying to make it flow, throwing up all night, praying to the pulse. From God. Come on, you know me. I work hungover all the time. This is different. I think it was the octopus. Have you ever eaten octopus? Don't eat octopus. Um, so basically, McLean is lying. He is he is tell, calling work and saying he feels sick, um, and uh, and that's that is what happened. And Billy comes by and he he um, hears it. tomorrow if I feel better. I'm just trying to cut some words. Trying to get some. Now I'm turning off my phone and trying to get some sleep. Uh, okay, so. Um, Um, I am just making his lie a little shorter. Cover the wind switch. The wind west, sort of. The wind west. That's going to be hard to say. Um, thank you, Hopfner Hustleman. Very nice to to have you here. Uh, you are you are welcome. Uh, you from the other the other side of the planet. Um, Okay, tell Brian to cover the Wind West short sale. Wind West short sale is hard to say. The, winds, the Windsor. Windsor, there we go, the Windsor short sale. I'll be in tomorrow. If I'm not dead, if I'm alive. I'll be in, tell Brian to cover the show, I'll be in tomorrow. I should be better. I should be. I should be walking. I should be able. I should be in tomorrow. I want. I want to say another thing that. Um, you know this. This was right. Amused. That was right. Um, the extra line is worth it because this is an important connection. Um, okay. So here's the deal. Okay. Throwing up all night. Yeah. Praying to. Throwing up all night, praying to the person. You know me. Come on, you know me. I work hungover all the time. This is different. I think it was the octopus. Have you ever eaten octopus? Don't eat octopus. He goes, have you, have you ever, ever eaten octopus? Don't eat it. Don't eat it. Ever eaten octopus? Don't eat octopus. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to, to cut. Um, hello from Australia. Okay, we, we're, we are circling the globe. We are spanning the globe in our interest in screenwriting. Good. Hi. Um, okay. North America. Welcome. Welcome, Zach Hurst in North America. Glad. <laughs> we are just, we are, let's try and get every continent. Um, Okay. Um, I'm in distant California. Well, then you are hot. It is hot 
here in California. Hi, John Frey. Good to see you. Um, we are we are all just we are all just identifying our our place of residence. Um, okay, tell Brian to cover the Windsor short sale. The Windsor short sale. I'll um, I'll check it tomorrow if I'm not dead. Check. I'll check it tomorrow if I'm not dead. If I'm if I'm not dead. No, I'm turning off my phone. And um, hello, Natasha. Yes, it it is it is freaking hot here in California right now. Um, If I get rehydrated, get rehydrated. Um, I'm just trying to make this a little more flourishy. Like, like I want it to sound so outrageous, like, like so much like a lie that, um, that it becomes amusing that he's being caught in the lie. And the fact is he could be turning off his phone and trying to get some sleep on the train. So, and, um, turning off my phone and taking antibiotics and taking, and, hmm, um, hello, Ray. Move out. Don't know what that means, so I will assume it is not some kind of spammy, trolly thing. Uh, we will see. We will keep an eye on an eight kiss. Um, turning on phone and, and if I'm not dead, if I'm not dead. Starting IV Gatorade, IV Gatorade. <laughs> Turn off and starting IV Gatorade. Okay, cool, <laughs> cool, good, good. Hi. Um, okay, no, I'm turning off my phone and starting IV Gatorade. Starting a an, uh, a Gatorade ID, a uh, Gatorade IV. Am I using a starting an uh, starting an IV starting a Gatorade IV? That's funny. Yes, it's a um, it's a brand name. Uh, legally, I won't be able to get that, but but um, but you know what? I'm, I'm fine. I'm trying Gatorade IV. Uh, you know, it, sometimes you do stuff and you say, you know what? I'll worry about the legal implications if anybody ever buys this in the meantime eh, it's fine it's fun it'll get it will get a it'll get a chuckle um okay this is just a little long um and station of Pittsburgh doors will be closed gotta go uh, 
okay. So the, the the point is he's lying and then he gets essentially outed by uh, a sound like the, the, the PA announcement. PA system. Um, okay. Gotta run. Gotta run. Maybe he hastily hangs up. Hastily disconnecting. Got a book. Got a <laughs> what lying? What lying? Lying? Lying to your job? So I got I got a I got a gardener. Um, okay, so this is getting a little better. Okay, so um, all right. I'll check it tomorrow if I'm not dead. No, I'm turning off my phone. Sir. Um. Okay, technically, he would say like. Hmm. Uh, what's his PA system? Is it busy? What? Lying to your boss? Is, see, what I want to get to is uh, I'm trying not to take too long with this, um, but um, um, so the, the 
good. Um, I don't want to say good opening line because it's not Billy made the opening line. Um, what line is your boss? Um, hi, Pezmed. Glenn, do you write raw on first drafts, i.e. not worry with cadence, feel, technical? How do you approach first drafts in general? Funny you should ask that. You can watch me write the first draft of this. <laughs> um, I have to figure out how. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a... Um, go, if you go back in the... Um, in this... Uh, series, the the step-by-step -step series, you'll see the first, I don't know, 70 or 80 episodes is the outline. But then I switch, and you can see in the description of each episode, it will say like rough draft day two, rough draft day three. That's, I, I did the rough draft of this, which I indeed did write raw and didn't worry about anything. I just tried to get something down that was from the outline. Um, I did that um, uh, for for a couple of months, um, so you can you can see that happen. Um, but my but my actual answer is um, my the way I the way I personally handle it is the way I believe is best is to do as much of an outline as you can. Some people can outline in great detail. Others you just get a rough idea. But the point is, I believe it's useful to outline. And then having gotten as much of an outline done as you can, um, try to transform that, that outline into a rough, rough, rough script versions, rough versions of scenes. Um, and when you are doing that, do not be at all critical. Just get something down. You can always come back to it. Sometimes, I literally, I have often written first drafts of scenes, which are just a summary of the scene, which is just like Joe meets uh, Billy, or here, McLean meets Billy on the train, um, and they flirt. But then McLean nervously analyzes him, and Billy leaves. That's you know, and then what I would do is the next, I would come back to it the next day and say, all right, let me think of five lines here. Um, okay, he has to be lying to his boss, blah, blah, blah. And, and so, yes, I I believe you should write what, the, whatever you can, no matter how bad it is, um, that is what the rough draft is for. You just want to get it into the form of scenes, of dialogue and description. Okay. So it's the so uh, so it was the accident before or after you left Chicago. Your knee, you have a scar, arthroscopic, maybe ten years ago. Are you a doctor? No, I'm a hedge fund drone. I just noticed things and, and put them in the sweatshirt. DePaul. DePaul, Chicago. DePaul, Chicago. It's, a, it's like a habit. It's like a habit. Detecting. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Yeah, now, you know, I, that does not mean that 
that if you want to, uh, thank you. Um, the thing about my way of getting through it is um, I don't like to, to dwell on any particular part of the rough draft because I just find myself getting stuck making it better and better and better. And the truth is you don't know what you're going to need in any scene until you've got the sense of the whole. Uh, things are, are, are useful or meaningful in proportion, in perspective, in, in terms of their relationship to other scenes. So sometimes what I used to do was I would really work on getting the opening scenes right. And, and I would spend weeks and weeks and really write these elaborate, beautiful scenes. And then later find that I had to cut them down to like two lines because they were just taking too long. So it, my feeling is get the big picture, get the rough draft, get the, get the basic, um, uh, get the basic sketch, the, the, the shape, the, the, the proportions down. And then you go back and you, you work piece by piece. You don't even have to go in order after that. Once you've got the whole thing down, you can just sort of sharpen up areas until the whole thing begins to coalesce. Um, that's how it has worked best for me. Other people, they cannot move ahead until they've got the first scene right. Um, because my experience has been that that just me leans to, leads to incredibly elaborate first scenes, <laughs> I, um, I have forced myself to just say, get the whole thing down and then, uh, then figure it out. Um, yeah, it's like molding a shape with clay, or I, I also like the idea of, um, which is true, like you, you get the rough form and then you begin to work on the details. Or I like to, you know, I, I've done some drawing in my time. And so the idea that you would sort of sketch, rough sketch with pencil, the shapes that you want to, the, the, the basic composition and, and form and subject of the thing, and then begin to look at details, begin to bring it out. Um, yes, exactly. Uh, that is <laughs> good. <laughs> Yay. Um, okay. Detecting. I just, um, I just notice things and put them together. Like, like, you, like you're just, like your sweatshirt, DePaul, Chicago. It's a, it's, it's like a, it's a, it's just a habit. Detecting, uh, detecting, kind of. I just remembered. I don't like sitting backwards. You rode a bike to the train, detecting, kind of. You rode a bike to the train, and you don't wear a helmet because you're vain about your hair, which is really nice, but you should wear a helmet. Okay. Um, okay, that's not bad. Um, Yes, exactly. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, uh, and for me, the hardest thing is sometimes I would shape an amazing first act and, and put in so much that, first of all, the first act was way too elaborate and detailed and slow. Um, and, and the other thing is I would just then begin to just resist getting rid of it. I would get rid of the, the great work I had done. I would think of some great exchange of dialogue, which was just too much, and I would hate to lose it. Um, and, and that's where the, that's why I got to the way I got to. Okay. Um, okay. Now we've got an IV problem because he was saying IV here and she's doing IVs. Um, Drinking. Six pack of Gatorade. No, I'm drinking 
down with six. Starting, starting with six pack of Gatorade. Yeah, that's that's fine. Okay, bye. <laughs> All right, I've added a couple of lines, but this is actually the right ry rhythm. Uh, yeah, this is this is okay. All right, let's get to. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Okay. Um. I'm going to take this out just to make the checks, Mrs. Weitzman, because she's saying tends to a handful and plug to diabetes. She checks Mrs. Weitzman out there. That's fine. I just. I'm just trying to cut down lines. Just uh, I've still got I've still got to cut four or five pages, um, and I could do this, but I that is too much. That's too hard. That I'm losing, uh, I, I'm losing an important emotional uh, beat by by closing that up. So I'm going to leave it. What's up with your detective? How's your detective? What's up? What's up with your detective thing? Catch anybody? There we go. Take my mind off. What's 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 with your detectives? What's with your detectives thing? What's what's with your detective thing? Catch anybody? Uh, um no, I'm taking a break from all that, right? Oh, why? You liked it so much. That was all I knew about you. Shirley Holmes, nurse detective. It's keeping busy with her work. Some people get too involved. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Drama? <laughs> kind of. Well, you're better off. I think so. All that looking up serial killers, it's not nice. It's not nice. What, what kind of people do that? You should get a nice hobby. <laughs> you should be just taking it. Puts on a smile. Okay. Uh, okay, tries to take off the conversation, ready to start her new Sleuthless life. Okay, now, ah, this is a thing I have. See, when I do this, it's a thing I have not yet written that I'm like, I put it in bold so I will say, ah, you still have to write that. So that's what I did, so now I have to. Damn. Um, Okay, and what is the alert? Now, I have to go figure out what this alert is. What is the alert? Uh, hmm, that's a good question, a thing I have not figured out. Um, you know what? Do I need an alert from Zena? Not really. She just talked about it. So in fact, I could just cut this.
Yeah, I'm trying to think. See, because the thing is, in a sense, it's all we need to know is that she's, and then then she's like a little restless here. Um, There we go. Look at that. That is cleaner. Okay. The truth is she has now said she is taking, she says it. I'm taking a break from that. Don't want to get to all these people are getting over dramatic and over involved. This is Weitzman criticizer. She feels a little bad. She sits crossword puzzle. Yeah, that's good. That is good, and it's shorter. Does it gotten me a new page? No, but it's it's close. Okay, not bad. All right. Uh, don't need down the block. Dandowski's man is parked at a discreet distance from George's house. All right. Climbs out, stretching and squinting in the morning. So, so. That's better. Um, hmm. Ba, 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 ba. Ted's RV drives past, wobbling, noisy, spewing. Boom. Well, um, there we go. Uh, okay. <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, it is. Um, it is. Thank you very much. Uh, um, uh, Nathan is talking about this video, Fear of Writing, um, in which I talk about the many, many years it took me to develop this, what I'm trying to teach you guys um, as just practical ways to get through the process as a an approach to all the emotional turmoil that comes from trying to be a writer because it's just hard it's just it is just um uh, frightening and you don't know it's frightening or if you do know it's frightening it doesn't help to know it um and the only and and it took literally took me years to uh to figure out how i could I, and i really wanted to and I knew I was good at it. And even if I was good at it, I knew it felt good to do. So I was highly motivated, which is the only reason I kept going for years, considering every time I sat down, I would think of, oh, this is a better project. I'll do that one. Or, oh, this is, doesn't work. I'll, uh, this is, or, or, oh, I have to go you know, buy a, a new book to read instead of this. Whatever it was, I could not get anything finished. I could not get anything written. And so I tried... Uh, many, many, many pathetic things 
before I came to this system, which is basically write it down, write it down in the same form, no matter what the content is, just have a simple format, which is uh, relatively under control so that you don't get... Like I used to spend months drawing maps of the locations of my stories. Um, and, and it doesn't, you don't need that. You don't need to know exactly how many steps it is from, from this room to that room. You, that's, that is a, uh, a, mis, a misallocation of energy. Um, and so the answer is, um, it took me many, many years to learn that I had to um, focus on the things that actually produce the work, which is uh, the notes, the outline, the, uh, the, the drafts. And, um, and that came to me uh, working out this idea, how to organize a project. I just try and keep it very simple. And I always have the same organization, the same documents, no matter if I'm writing a, a, a radio play or a, a screenplay or a novel or anything. It's the same documents because that way I have a, a place that I can't turn away from. And that place is structured to get me to the scenes and the outline and then to the text. Because until you write the words, until you write the words on the page, you're, you, you, can't, you can't fix them. You can't make them good. And you can't catch the little sparks of inspiration. Yeah, I don't need that. Peaceful. See, because here's the thing. When I wrote until, that's fine, but it's an extra word. And the truth is, if he's peaceful, and then the next thing is Ted's um, uh, RV drives past, wobbly, noisy, spewing exhaust, he has been interrupted. <laughs> so we don't need to say until. Um, All right. Um, congratulations. Yeah, good. Bravo. Oh dear, um, I will get to that later. Uh, it parks from across, across from George's house. George uh, Dandasi tries to maintain his beatific calm, walking over. Um, all right, I'm taking this out. Um, the gang's all, the gang's all here. Um, uh, it parks across from George's house. Here's the thing I'm trying to decide. Um, exterior Ted's RV. There we go. Um, I, I believe that because like George's, um, parks across from George's. Uh, okay. All right. Da, 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 da. Donetsky tries to maintain his being walking over. Hey, gang's all here. The gang's all here. Are you for real with this? What? <laughs> You just parked a conspiracy nut billboard outside the house, their house. It's my home and my beliefs. First Amendment. Take your amendment around the corner now. <laughs> Ted is about to get into a spirited intellectual debate, but then he looks in Dundusky's eyes and just starts the RV. <laughs> Dundusky watches Ted's belief drive out of sight. Returns to his van.
You know, I don't think we need that. Boom. Okay. Uh, congrats, Najo. That's great. I am so proud of you. This is amazing. Uh, you know, uh, you know, that's great. Great. Well done. Um, Najo is a really important lesson for everyone, which is she keeps doing work. She keeps producing scripts and she keeps submitting them. She submits them all over the place because that is how you get lucky. You get lucky when you uh, put yourself out there. Sometimes you don't get lucky, but the only way you're going to get lucky is if you put yourself out there. If you can afford to submit to things, do it. Um, uh, do some research on what's the what's valuable for you. Um, but in general, strategizing and planning of like, oh, I'm not going to let anyone see this until it's just the right moment. That's business bullshit. That's that's for when you're in the in when you have agents and managers and they're going to strategize who to show to when. When you are a, a, a writer starting out, show everything you can to everyone you can all the time. Okay. Uh, good. Top hat and brightly colored tuxedo. Cool. Uh, sings. 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 To Zena's mom and dad. Waiter. Let's not get into, I don't want to spend too much time, oops, uh, too much time here. This this reluctantly I have an actual job to do. That's a, like a, a, a minor character without a name, and I am spending my time uh, describing their feelings. Not worth it. Okay. Okay, that's good. That's good. All right. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> yes, indeed. Keep congratulations, Najo. Creative screenwriting for pilots and kinodrome for each. I can't believe it. Well, I can believe it. Clearly, <laughs> you're you're doing good. You're doing good stuff, and you're showing it, and that's great. Uh, good for you. You are giving us all good examples. Uh, okay, keeping keeping moving on here. All right, Cena. Um. to a taxi okay we need to give a name to this town name to the town George's town is hmm mm hmm <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
uh, do you know a town called Ricksville? Ricksville. Ricksville. There we go. Look at that. I got it on a shorter line. Uh, you know a town called Ricksville? Yeah, that's going to cost you a fortune. I have a fortune. Go. Happy anniversary. I love you guys. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, all right. Overkill description. Okay, yeah, looking. There we go. Look at that. Less words, less lines. Sooner or later, I will get down to 68 pages instead of. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you know, um, I think I'm going to stop here because we're, we're getting into a new sequence. And so I think I'm going to stop uh, a little early and, and say I'll see you tomorrow. Um, congratulations to Nacho, and uh, please all of you take from her the, uh, the example of continuing to work and work and work. Just try stuff out, put stuff out there, and see what happens. That is the only thing any artist can do. So do it like her. It's working out good for her. Uh, that's it. Go write something.